Hi guys, it's Doc Curry, and the next 48 hours are critical as Jerome Powell testifies before the U.S. Senate on Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm going to explain exactly what Jerome Powell is expected to say and how the market is expected to react. So let's get into it. Before we get into the testimony Jerome Powell is expected to give, let's go over some of the individual stock news first and give you some trade ideas on what you might want to trade this week. A new bipartisan Senate TikTok bill will be unveiled on Tuesday. If this passes, it will go to the Congress, and if that passes, it'll go to President Biden for signing. This bill will give President Biden the ability to ban TikTok. And if he does that, this could be very good for companies that provide other short-form video content, such as Instagram and YouTube, meaning this could be good for stocks such as Meta and Google. Now, of course, that's a little bit more of a longer term trade since this is not something that's expected to pan out right away. But this could be good fundamental value added to Meta and Google, both of which have come down significantly on their P.E. ratios and are trading a lot closer to fair valuation, even though they're still slightly overvalued at this time. And layoffs continue with Cirrus XM now cutting 8% of its workforce as part of a broader reorganization. Keep in mind that when companies do layoffs, this is bad for the economy, but it's good for stocks because it means that company earnings should go up as they reduce their costs of their labor and headcount. As a result, Cirrus XM Holdings was up 1.18% today on this news. And Tesla is cutting its Model S and Model X prices in the U.S. in order to increase demand. Tesla is making a price reduction of 5% on the Model S and 9% on the Model X. Now, while this should help Tesla increase their delivery numbers, it will also lower their profits, meaning their sales and revenue should increase, but their earnings will more likely decrease or at the very least not increase as much as you would expect for this increase in demand. Part of the reason for the cusp cutting is that there's currently an EV price war taking place. For years, Tesla has had pretty much a monopoly in the United States, but now with companies like Ford delivering EV vehicles, Tesla and Ford are slashing prices in order to cut costs so that more customers will buy their vehicles. This is good for consumers because it lowers the cost of EVs, but it's bad for company stock prices as earnings go down. Tesla stock was down over 2% on the day and continued to fall in the after hours. And a new Apple patent has added hype around a foldable device coming from this iPhone maker. Now, if Apple does release a foldable iPhone, they're going to be pretty late to the party as companies like Samsung have already had foldables for years now. And a lot of people think the hype around foldable cell phones has pretty much passed as there doesn't really seem to be a huge use case for them. Still, Amazon stock was up 1.85% today on the news. Now let's move on to Jerome Powell and what he is expected to testify to the U.S. Senate on Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, it's very tempting at this point to do some technical analysis and show you guys where the market stands technically. But it's also important to remember that once Jerome Powell starts speaking, the technicals don't matter. The stock market is going to move based upon what Jerome Powell says or what he does not say. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell heads to Capitol Hill this week, and he's going to have his hands full. Powell has to convince legislators that he's committed to bringing down inflation while not pulling down the rest of the economy at the same time. Markets have been hanging on by nails, wondering if he can pull it off. Sentiment in recent days has been more optimistic, but that can swing the other way in a hurry should Powell stumble this week during his semi-annual testimony on monetary policy. He'll probably reiterate the message that rates are staying elevated for some time until inflation is clearly resolved. But should he take that stance, he's likely to face some heat. This hawkish stance, which could cause the market to go down, also has Democratic legislators worried that Powell's Fed risk dragging down the economy. And in particular, those at the lower end of the wealth scale with its determination to fight inflation. But as Bulls have pointed out, and as Jerome Powell will most likely point out on Tuesday and Wednesday, the economy is strong. 
However, it's important for you and all investors to realize that just because the economy is strong now does not mean that you're going to glide by with no recession at all. PAL has to work to bring inflation down. And because the economy is so strong, that recession or that decrease in inflation that we might get later this year is going to be delayed. The problem is, the more you delay a recession, the deeper it's going to be. Now, as many people in the comment section have pointed out, Powell really just needs to rip the Band-Aid off and do some larger interest rate hikes and get inflation under control quickly. Yes, that will put the economy into a recession, but it would most likely be a mild recession given how strong the economy currently is. Now, Jerome Powell has already said that he's going to continue to increase rates, but we're not expected to get that massive rate hike that's just going to rip the Band-Aid off like we really need. A monetary report to Congress repeated often used language that policymakers expect ongoing increases in rates. Powell will note the resilience of the real economy, that is, how strong the economy currently is, while cautioning that the inflation data has turned higher and the road to taming it will be lengthy and bumpy. But Powell is unlikely to tee up a half point or 50 basis point rate hike later this month, as some investors fear. And this right here is key. Normally, when Jerome Powell is speaking to Congress, he tends to be a little bit more dovish to please the Democratic senators that he's currently speaking to. And that means he's unlikely to introduce the idea of a 50 basis point rate hike at the March meeting. And that could cause the stock market to rally because that's the one thing that the stock market is worried about right now. And if Jerome Powell does not mention a 50 basis point rate hike, then we can expect the stock market to go up. After all, the stock market normally rises when Jerome Powell speaks to either Congress or the Senate. Now, despite Jerome Powell's expected dovish stance on Tuesday and Wednesday, the Cleveland's Fed's Now Tracker shows that March core inflation, that's excluding food and energy, is expected to increase to 5.7% from 5.5% in February. By the way, that next CPI data comes out on March 14th, that's next week. So while Jerome Powell is expected to take a dovish stance on Tuesday and Wednesday, and the stock market is expected to go up on Tuesday and Wednesday, the reality is the Fed is probably going to have to raise interest rates higher than expected or continue raising interest rates for longer than expected in order to get inflation down, especially if the Fed's now tracker is correct and that inflation is going to continue to go up in February and March. Now, ultimately, when the Fed meets in two weeks, the market will be looking for a 25 basis point rate hike from the Federal Reserve. That's expected. However, the absolute market mover is not going to be the rate hike. It will be temporary market mover, but it's not going to be the ultimate market mover. The ultimate market mover is going to be the Summary of Economic Projections, or SEP, that is also going to be released along with the Fed decision at the March meeting. And that is what will ultimately move the markets. Every single SCP to date has shown that interest rates are going up higher than expected. And if we get another SCP showing interest rates going up higher than expected, that could send the markets down in two weeks, even if the Fed does their expected 25 basis point rate hike. Keep in mind the Fed's next meeting is March 21st to the 22nd. Now, regarding what time Jerome Powell is expected to speak to the Senate, he will be speaking at 10 a.m. Eastern time on both Tuesday and Wednesday. That's about 30 minutes after the market opens, and he is expected to speak for anywhere from one to two hours, depending upon how many questions U.S. senators have. I would expect the larger market movement in reaction to Jerome Powell to take place on Tuesday, since Wednesday should mostly just be a reiteration of what he said on Tuesday. 
The market is currently pricing in a 69% chance of a 25 basis point rate hike at the March meeting and a 31% chance of a 50 basis point rate hike at the March meeting. Although these numbers are expected to change drastically once we get the February CPI next week. Now, the ultimate fear right now in the markets is that either inflation is going to rebound and continue going up and the Fed's going to have to do more interest rate hikes or worse, the Fed is going to cause a recession. So far, though, every single recession prediction has been wrong and it keeps getting delayed. So what's really going on with this expected recession? Well, the data continues to point to a recession on the horizon. The Fed's rate moves put the manufacturing sector at risk as factory demand continues to slow down as a result of higher interest rates and a strong dollar. In addition, the housing market momentum is stalled just as the critical spring season approaches. So why is the recession always six months away? Well, part of the problem is that the continued strong jobs market, as well as high consumer spending, are complicating the Federal Reserve's campaign to tame inflation. The fact is, the Federal Reserve has not raised interest rates enough to sufficiently slow down the economy. And not only has inflation started to turn around and go back up again, but financial conditions also remain loose despite the fact that Jerome Powell continues to flat out lie and say that financial conditions are tight, the Fed's own data shows that financial conditions are loose. And so long as there's easy money in the markets, the market will continue to rally and the economy will continue to go up as well. The fact of the matter is inflation is not going to come down until the Fed starts raising interest rates at a faster pace again, or as they continue to raise interest rates and not slow down and not pause. The concern is that either the Fed is going to raise interest rates too slow or pause too soon, and we're going to see inflation come back in a major way, or the Fed is going to raise interest rates too fast and cause a major recession. Right now, the Fed is walking a very tight line and nobody, not even the Fed, knows what's in the future. All we know is that every single recession indicator is screaming that a recession is going to happen sometime this year. But don't forget that a recession is officially defined as two quarters in a row of negative GDP. So it takes six months before we know if we're in a recession or not. That's why a recession is always six months away, no matter where we're at. The only time that would not be the case is if we do get a quarter of negative GDP, then a recession could theoretically be as close as three months away. Now, as the stock market gets ready for Jerome Powell's comments, we are making money in our We Profit Day and Night coaching program, and we have a wonderful trader in there who is helping all everybody who is new to learn how to trade options and make money. If you want to get in on these trades or learn how to trade options with us, as well as get access to a lot of premium alerts, including our dark pull data, our options flow data, and a lot of other important premium alerts, then make sure you come join our We Profit Day and Night Coaching Program, where we will teach you how to trade options and how to make money, no matter whether the market goes up, down, or even trades flat. If you're interested in that and you want to get more information, schedule a call with our onboarding specialist who can give you all the details, as well as answer any questions that you have. You can schedule a call with our onboarding specialist at weprofitdayandnight.com. That's weprofitdayandnight.com. Com. If you got a lot out of this video, then be a good friend and share this video with your friends and family so that they will know what to expect from Jerome Powell as well, as well as how the market is expected to react to Jerome Powell's speeches on Tuesday and Wednesday. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you do want to see some of the data that's coming up that's going to move the market as the economy goes forward, make sure you watch the last video that I uploaded here.